All right, today our goal is to apply some of those ideas of similarity that we had we mentioned in the previous lessons. Um, first of all, remember, if two figures are similar, it tells us here these hexagons are similar, we know that we can compare their size. Their sides are gonna be proportional to one another. So I see I have this really good pair of corresponding side lengths, 20, goes with eight. Notice how I set that up. I decided right here to put the larger value over the smaller value, and so I want to remain consistent to that. I always want the larger over the smaller. The larger is gonna come from the larger hexagon, the smaller from the smaller hexagon. Well, if I set that up, 20 over eight would equal x over six the larger over the smaller. So if I set it up like that, I can cross multiply. 20 times six gives me 120 equals eight times x. When I divide both sides by x, or when I divide both sides by eight, x comes out to be 15. So x is 15. I can still use that same ratio 20 over eight to find uh, 15 to y. But if we realize what just happened here, when it's 15 in the larger, we know it's going to be 6 in the smaller. 15 in the larger means that y is going to have to be 6. We can cross multiply 20 y equals 120. 8 times 15 is 120. And what do we get when we divide 120 by 20? We get 6. So we can see that ratio is staying true. These side lengths right here are the same length. So their proportional sides are also going to be the same length. <clears throat> Alright, so here it says we've got these pentagons, the regular pentagons, and they're similar to each other. The similarity ratio of ABCDE to FG H, I, J is three to two, find the values of X and Y, okay? So, B, C, B, C in the name is going to be proportional to G, H. But even before we deal with that, yeah, we're given A is 12, and we want to find FG, and we see AB and FG, because of the name, those are corresponding sides. So we know 12 to X squared plus 4 is equal to 3 to two, we know that we, we know that um, that proportion right there. That's the ratio, larger to smaller, larger to smaller. So we can cross multiply here. Two times twelve is twenty-four equals three. I'm gonna be a little crafty here. Three times x squared plus four. Instead of distributing into three, instead of I'm gonna divide both sides by three to get eight equals x squared plus 4. Subtract 4 from both sides. 4 equals x squared. When we take the square root of both sides, x could equal a negative 2 or a positive 2. Could equal either one. Either one right there. So we know that these are regular pentagons. All right, either way, if x is a negative 2 or a positive 2, uh, when we plug it back in, we see that x squared is giving us a positive 4 plus 4. That means this side is 8. That means every side is 8 because these are regular pentagons. Over here, this side is 12. That means that all these sides are 12 because they are regular pentagons. And that means 12 equals 3y minus 6. We can add 6 over, divide.
divide by 3 and y comes out to be 6. So where x could be a negative 2 or a positive 2, it doesn't really matter. y is definitely a 6. And here it says, what is the ratio of the perimeter of a, b, c, d, e to f, g, h, i, j? <coughs> well, 12 times 5 is 60, and 8 times 5 is 40, so that is 60 to 40. And if we reduce 60 to 40, we get 3 to 2. So notice the ratio of the perimeters is the same as the ratio to the sides. Larger, smaller, is 3 to 2. It's big. In fact, that's our next theorem. If two polygons are similar, then the ratio of their perimeters will be equal to the ratio of their corresponding sides. Here, these two figures are similar polygons. Their corresponding sides have a ratio of 2 to 5. So their corresponding sides have a ratio of 2 to 5. Smaller to larger, obviously. If the perimeter of figure H, I, J, K is 27, H, I, J, K would be referring to the 2 because that is first in that order. What is the perimeter figure L, M, N, O? Well, 2 to 5 then is going to be the same as the ratio of their perimeters. The ratio of their sides equal to the ratio of the perimeters. That's that theorem we just saw. And we just saw that work out on the last problem. So the perimeter of LMNO is what we're looking for. We can cross multiply. P times 2, of course, is 2P. Um, 5 times 27 would be 135. We divide both sides by 2. The perimeter of L, M, N, O would be 67 and a half inches. Cool. Alright, so this Fox plans to jog 5,000 meters a day in training for a race. The park where Fox jogs is in the shape of a regular pentagon. The side length of the park is five centimeters long on a map with a scale of one centimeter is 50 meters. How many times does Fox need to jog around the perimeter of the park to complete his daily training? All right, so here's our park. It's a regular pentagon, right? Did I just make that up? No, regular pentagon, all the sides are the same and the side length of the park is five centimeters on the map. That means a total perimeter of 25 centimeters. But we know for every one centimeter, there's really 50 meters. So how many meters is this? Well, there's one centimeter for every 50 meters. 25 times 50. is 1,250 meters. So one time around the park is 1,250 meters. We want to know how many times it's going to take to go 5,000 meters. So we're going to take 5,000. We're going to see how many times 1,250 goes into 5,000. It's four times. how many times he needs to jog four times around that part to go a 5K. 